Boa tarde. É, nós estamos aqui com a apresentação do, do Joe Ortiz, Zé. É, ele veio para cá num convênio entre o INPE e o Instituto da Universidade de Oxford, passou com a gente um mês, e aí ele fez um trabalho com o Maida e o Python, para tentar achar um modelo bom para fazer modelo de tal técnico. Yeah, thanks, Mauro. Um, so, like you said, I'm a physics undergraduate student from Oxford, and I've been in the for one month now. Had a great time here, and I've been working with Mauro and his group on um, the DTM extraction from the LiDAR pump cloud. So, it's part of a bigger project, which is to estimate the biomass in the regions of the Amazon. But this is the area that I've been focusing on while I've been here. So first, I'll tell you about why it's very important to have a accurate and smooth digital, digital terrain model uh, when trying to calculate the biomass. So to calculate the biomass, you need two models. You need the digital terrain model and the canopy height. So you, you create a model of both of these things, and then you take away the, um, the, the terrain level from the canopy height, and then use this height to, and the corresponding ground data to make an estimate of the biomass that section of the angle. And this is the basic principle of how to make the biomass estimation. So clearly it's very important that you have a smooth uh, DTM, because if you don't, you're going to have spikes, which are going to reduce the area of, uh, that you think vegetation is in, so it's going to completely distort the biomass estimation. So it's very important to have a flat DTM. Um, so the data we used was, um, is LiDAR data which is not, not typical LiDAR data because it's a very low point density. I think it's around four points per meter squared density, which is not typical, it's much lower than normal. And on top of that, to make it harder, there's the, the area is very dense the forest, which means that most of the returns aren't the ground, they're from the canopy. So you actually have a very, very low density of ground points uh, in the cloud to work with. So that makes it very difficult. Um, also, the data we were using is the first time that um, our honors group had used uh, full waveform data. Um, I spent the first week uh, investigating full waveform data and what it, what it was. And um, we found that the peaks in the waveform didn't quite correspond exactly to the points in the cloud. And there seemed to be an offset which was changing a bit through the data points. And we, couldn't, we weren't clear on how, how it worked converting the waveform into a point cloud, so we decided it's better to just ignore the waveform for now and maybe include it later, but for now just to work with the point cloud to create a DTM. So um, I, I, read, I, I looked around to see what papers there were already on this and found these two papers by these guys, um, which were for data very much like the LiDAR cloud that we have, so uh, for for um, dense forested areas. And so I adapted their algorithm and tried to apply it to our data. And they wrote two different papers. The first one is based, it's just creating the DTM, and the second one goes on to expand on these ideas to make an even better model that removes all spikes. And I mainly used the first paper, but I'm going to come on to the second one a little bit at the end. So the LiDAR data we get is like this. So it's orientated at whatever angle the flight was at. Uh, and this is the x and y coordinates. And it's a long rectangular flight with n this bits in the angle we cut them off because it's, the algorithm only deals with rectangular rectangle areas. Uh, so also the algorithm can only deal with areas that have their axes aligned along the x or y. So the first task was to transform the point cloud so the first thing I did was the translation to move the origin to up here or that arrow is. Um, and then I did a rotation on all the points in the cloud so that the, so that um, it's now and the axis are now aligned, aligned on X and Y. And it, the first point, this point here, is at the origin basically. And the little white box there, that's this section here, which is like the first 200 meters on the X and it's 300 meters on the Y. And that's the area I worked with um, to start with, because if you try into a big area, it takes ages to process the points. So I just started working with this area. 
Uh, and here's a nice picture of it in 3D. Um, so, in order for to for the algorithm to process this point cloud, the first thing to do is to divide it up into tiles. And the tiles can be around like 60 meters or up to 120 meters in diameter. And I chose here to work with like 100 meters by 100 meters, as it's suggested in the paper of doing about that. But at the end, I tried different tile words. I'll talk about that in a bit. So once you divide <coughs> these tiles, you need to divide the tiles up into cells. And the cells are five meters in diameter. And this five meters was decided by the fact that we have very low point density. So we wanted to choose a cell size that meant that almost every single cell would have at least one or two ground points in it. Because you don't want to have cells that have only canopy points in, because then it will completely distort the model. Um, and that also influenced the, the choice of the size of the tile, because you want to have enough cells within a tile to actually create a model of the tile. Um, yeah, so this, uh, so once you divide into a tile, once you divide into cells, you look at all the points in the cell and you choose the lowest elevation and assign that to the cell. This gives you a grid of 20 by 20 points. Uh, then what I did was I, well, initially I didn't have this standard deviation filter in and we found that we got quite a few spikes in DTM, so we decided to put in the standard deviation filter and it made a big difference because our data had many more canopy points, a high proportion of canopy points than the data they were working with the paper, so it actually made a big difference putting in the standard deviation filter. And so uh, any points one standard deviation above the mean be removed. And so when you start the processing, with the algorithm with a grid of data points with a few gaps in where the points have been removed. So this is how the um, algorithm works. So you start with this, this grid, like I said, of points, and then you apply a linear and a quadratic fit to the grid of points. And this is the surface fit. And so you, you have the surface which is modeled by the points, and you look at all the points below the surface and you say these we're going to assume are ground points. Uh, then we put them into set A, and then if they're not, if they're above the surface, we put them to set B and we say, okay, we're going to filter these points later and decide what they are. So you look at the points in set B, and one by one you remove them from the from the entire data set and you do another model. And if this model fits better, uh, then you discard the point and say, okay, it's not a ground point. But if it, if the model's worse when you remove this point, then you say, okay, we're going to put it in set C as a ground point. We're going to assume for now that it's a ground point. So you end up with the set C of um, what we assume now are ground points. Uh, then we have this. Then we we define this parameter r squared, which uh, defines how well the fit, how well the quadratic linear fit works with the data. So if it's a very good fit, then you have a very high R squared of R squared goes between zero and one, and if it's a very good fit, it will be limited like above 0.95. And so we decided to put the threshold at 0.95, as I suggested in the paper. So if the fit uh, was a good fit, then it would have a value of R squared of like 0.98, and then we say, okay, um, this fit works. Then we're just going to do DTM interpolation with the quadratic linear fit. So um, this whole process happens with both the quadratic and linear fit, and then whichever one's better, you select and use it for the DTM interpolation. Um, and if neither the quadratic or linear fit works very well, if it's maybe like a cubic um, fit in the tile, then we do a process of slope filtering and cubic spline interpolation. Um, the first part, you just go along the x-axis and the y-axis, going through all the points. Um, and if there's a change in the sign of the gradient, then you replace that point with the average elevation of its two neighboring points. And that's the slope filtering process. And then, then you do spline interpolation on the remaining points to fill in the gaps and produce a DTM. And we produce the DTM at a resolution of 10 meters by 10 meter points, 10 meters by 10 meter cells. Um, this again, so the last step of producing DTM at this resolution is you look at all the points, you 
create new cells at this resolution of 10 by 10, and then you look inside the cell, similar to four, and choose the lowest point in that cell. So the DTM resolution is a bit lower than the resolution, than the size, a bit bigger than the size of the cells. So you have a few cells in each DTM cell. So, so just may, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, how how many points you have for the ground points in terms of percentage in your in your database? Do you have that number at least? No, I didn't have that. Okay. Um, or, or yeah, I'll show. Okay. Um, so here's what the result looked like. This is for the area of 300 by 200 meters, and the tile size of 100 by 100. And every single tile shows the projected fit as the best model. Um, as you can see, it's probably sensible. It was almost all projected fit in the whole area, and the resolution of each of these little things, of each of these little cells, is 10 by 10. And you can see that it's quite smooth and looks pretty good, except you have an odd spike, like here there's a spike, and there's a spike there, which like clearly that's not the ground, that's the tree, uh, there's a problem with the tree. Um, and those spikes appear on the edges of the tiles all the time, so this, is, this image here is six different tiles put together, that's why it's 200 by 300. And um, the spikes always appear at the edge of the tiles. Um, and again, this is 60 by 70 tiles, so there's uh, like a few more tiles in here. And all of them chose quadratic uh, model, except for one that chose a linear fit, maybe like this one up here. Um, and again, you can see that there's a few spikes here along the, those are along the edges of the tiles. Um, but, they, but there's no spikes here where there was before, or here where there's before. So there's, the spikes appear at different points depending on the tile size you choose. So the next task, which I didn't actually have time to do, is to deal with these spikes over here in the um, model. And the way you can do that, which is suggested in the second paper that I was talking about before, is to um, do is to choose different tile sizes. So for example, you go from a tile size of 60 meters up to 120 meters uh, in like 10 meter increments, and try all of these different tile sizes. Uh, so that the different tiles get, might get different models fitted to them. And then you take a median of all of those, uh, then, you, then you create the DTM and look at each of the cells in the DTM and pick the median of the elevation of those cells, and that I think should remove all spikes, although well, I haven't actually got to try yet. I'm planning on doing that this afternoon, and hopefully it should remove all the spikes. Um, yeah, so the um, overall, I think the algorithm worked quite well, and it produced quite a smooth DTM, and hopefully it will be completely smoothed out after this afternoon. But it needs to be tested on like much more area than I had. I already did that 600 meter area because it takes ages to process other things, and it definitely needs to be tested on like more complicated terrain that might have some cubic fits or other ones. Because the, I, I tried out some cubic fits, but not for several tiles, only for single tiles, so we need to try on for cubic fits for like big areas and more strange and complex terrains. And hopefully I think it should hold up, but it would be nice to see. And then, um, so I'm, I'm leaving, this is my last day, and then Nardo's told me that uh, a girl called Mariana is coming to kind of continue what I've been doing. And she's gonna be hopefully like testing how my algorithm runs and how other ones compare and try to produce the best one possible that you can use for biomass estimations in the future. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for coming, and thanks so much, Maldo, for having me here this month. I've learned so much. And thank you, John, for bringing me here. Oh, yeah. It's been a great time. Yeah.